Okay, so hello and welcome back to a different type of Unity video, where today we'll be looking at the new exciting features coming in Unity 2020.2. We can get access to the new features by downloading the new beta version that's available now. So I'll be making my next few tutorials cover how to use some of the new features. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. But first I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. So the 2020.2 beta, the blog is here and this is probably the best place to read about all the new features and I'll be going through it with you. I won't be covering every single little feature, mainly just the things I'm most interested in and that I think I'll be doing videos on. So I'll put a link down below in the description so you can have a look through the blog post yourself and I'll only be really covering the things that are interesting to me. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here but it would take a very long time to go through every little thing. So I'll be covering the things that I plan on making tutorials for. And as I said, this video is really just so you can see the new features and you can get an idea of what I want to cover. And then you can let me know down below in the comments what you actually want to see so I can get an estimate of, you know, who wants to see what feature and the order I'll do those in. So let's start scrolling. I'm not going to be reading every little thing out like the intro. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But programmer tools and performance improvements is pretty nice. It's basically saying as your project gets bigger and bigger right now, the code uh, recompiling time gets really, really long. So they've added some improvements here to make it so that as your project gets bigger, it obviously will take longer, but they've made that less so. So for example, one thing here is that it only recompiles what needs to be recompiled. Um, so that's pretty useful, that'll, that'll save some time. There's also a profiler here for recompiling, so you can see what's taking all the time. Root namespace seems pretty nice. I've not actually tested this yet, but there's a field and you can actually make it so that when you create a new script, it automatically puts it inside a namespace that you set in the uh, assembly definition file. So that'll be cool. Another thing here is that if you're making changes that don't involve code changes like material shaders prefabs, then it actually will skip the uh, recompiling here. So this will speed up quite a lot of time when you're, it says here for artists mainly, obviously artists are the ones mainly working with material shaders and prefab stuff and game designers, I guess. But yeah, that's still pretty nice to know. So obviously build time improvement is always a good thing and C sharp eight support. So it was only recently, I think Unity was many, many versions behind in the C sharp version it used, but now it's basically caught up. Uh, I think everyone's pretty much using C sharp eight now and C sharp nine is coming out. So I'm imagining it won't be much longer before they upgrade to that as well. Time delta time stability improvements. I've personally never noticed a problem with this, but apparently they've made it better. It's always a nice thing to hear. And Unity safe mode here says they make it simpler and uh, they speed up the process when upgrading a Unity version that has that causes errors in your code. And it says here, um, it's designed to provide the best environment when, for resolving script compilation errors. So yeah, it's just more speed. This is all just about speed really. And we can keep going down. And another cool thing here that I saw is camera.main used to be a performance costly function to call. You'd normally cache it in start, for example. But now over here, there's actually a dedicated list of objects such as the main camera and searching the list is almost instantaneous. So it seems like you don't need to cache it now. I don't know if it's still gonna be best practice to cache it. Is it gonna be worth it if it's still, if it just uses 0 0.00 milliseconds to get it? We'll see what people do with this. Improved UV unwrapping speeds and gizmo rendering speeds. It's all just about speed so far, but it's still, it's all good to hear. Pretty much all the changes so far don't require us as developers to do anything. They've just made everything faster. So it's just a really nice thing to hear. Now this next one is something I'm definitely interested in, which is the editor and team workflow. So one of the things is the localization package. If you've ever, if you don't know what localization is, it's the form of adding support for multiple languages into your game. And usually you'd have to use some third party asset or make your own, but now Unity has made their own and it looks really good. If we go and look at the image, we see here it has what you'd normally have, which would be, for example, an Excel spreadsheet with languages and keys. So in your game, for example, this speech here, you'd give it the speech of, I don't know, spawn villager sequence two. And then when it gets to load that, there's a script that says, okay, you want to display spawn villager sequence two. And then based on which language is selected, it'll load up the language. And you can even have smart, which means that you can have variables in there. So for example, if you're 
uh, text is localized and has you know varying words based on maybe a certain integer or a string or a bool or whatever you can you can check the code and change the text accordingly this is something I definitely want to do a video on and it'll probably take more than one video because it has a localizing text but it also has local localizing audio sources as well as images so you can have an image which is a flag and then based on the language they got selected it just uses a different flag same with audio sources so your character could have a voice line that it loads the correct voice line based on the language they've selected. Seems like a really cool tool, so let me know down below if you want to see tutorials on this, because I definitely plan on doing it. Just keep in mind that it is in early stages, so if I do tutorials now, they might need to be updated at some point, but I still think it's a really good idea to get people excited about this and to start to learn how to use it, because I imagine there won't be drastic changes. The system already seems pretty, pretty robust. Another thing is editor package localization. So you can make your own package and then you can actually localize that. So the different people downloading your package get the, I don't know, name and description and all the different things, the instructions that can all be localized too. Some of this next stuff I'm not too familiar with. So physics, articulation, body components, asset database consistency check. You can spend time looking through this if it's interesting to you. Um, Prefab imports sounds pretty good. So they've just improved correctness, performance, scalability, cacheability, and other attributes. So using prefabs is just going to be a lot faster and a bit less buggier. Unity hub update and package manager, quick search. If we look down here, this is something that's very nice. Arrays and lists in the inspector are now reorderable. And you can add non-reorderable if you don't want that. But for the most part, you probably do want it reorderable, which is why it's the default behavior now. So I've been using an add-on for a while called like um, Odin Serializer, and it does a lot more than just this, but this is one of the features it offers, and now it's actually in Unity by default, which is really nice. It just allows you to click and drag wherever there's a list, and you can just reorder things, because right now you have to like remove and add, and it, it's just, just a mess. It's now going to be so much easier to set up lists in the inspector. So yeah, the rest of it is pretty much just inspector changes. Some interesting ones are like here. Uh, you can now drag multiple prefabs into the scene at the same time. That's pretty useful. It's pretty cool. And for example, I don't know, renaming stuff here, you can now undo when you rename project windows, something you probably don't do very often, but you know, it, it exists now. There's so many great improvements. Let's keep going down. Artist tools, you know, I'm not too big of a user on Shader Graph, but Shader Graph does look very promising and they've been updating it a lot. And now it's looking pretty, pretty much feature rich. Because when I first ever tried it, there were plenty of missing features, things you couldn't do. But now, you know, it seems like it can do pretty much everything. I'm sure there's definitely stuff you still can't do and you'd need to write shader code for, but they're trying to get to the point, it seems, where, you know, no matter what effect you want to make, you can do it in shader graph. And that same stuff goes for VFX graph. They've added, you know, new features, improvements, probably, you know, more performance improvements. And if we actually look through this little video here, they've got like an asteroid field, an asteroid belt, and uh, they've got stuff. I don't know if this was already in there, but they've got different uh, different meshes. So I would imagine um, it's like LOD. So as you get further away, it swaps them maybe. And if you get even further away, it actually just gets rid of them. It is actually LOD. It says here LOD values. So there you go. And for those of you who don't know, LOD is level of detail. So as you get further away from a mesh, it swaps to use a different mesh. So you'll have like your high detailed rock, then your medium detail rock and your low detail rock so that the things really far away, just use a low de detail version because you're not going to be able to see the high detail anyway. So it's a good uh, performance optimization. We keep going down. We have down here, recorder API. So this is in here. Um, you can now, I mean, this was already in there, I think, but it might've been a preview package or something on the asset store, but you can now automate video recording in the editor. So that's pretty cool. So if you want to record like a cinematic in your game, you don't need to like play it and use a screen recorder or something, you can actually record it from Unity, which is pretty nice. And the next thing I'm really interested in is this, the UI toolkit. So Unity have been working on a new UI system that they originally started making as a way to um, make editor UI. So like custom add-ons where, you know, where it normally just shows a script and the fields and the, the different things you can fill in. You could make your own UI there to make it more de designer friendly, but now, They've actually made it so it works for runtime UI, your actual gameplay UI, your menus, your you know hotbar, your minimap, all this stuff you can now do using this new UI builder that I'm going to be doing plenty of videos on. So if you look here, they've got the game view, and over here they've got the U UI builder. So over here you've got uh, the classes, and it's .uss, and then they've got uh, CSS stuff for style sheets. 
So this is very similar to web dev. So if you've ever designed a website, the actual way you do this now is a lot simpler, uh, a lot similar, sorry. And also the, um, it's still, still familiar for people who haven't done web dev because you'll have kind of like a toolbox of different things like buttons and you can just drag a button in here. So you've got the screen and then as a child, you've got this panel of buttons and then you've got the free button start options about. And of course you can then have events. So when you hit start, it then you know loads a certain scene or whatever. I'll be covering all that stuff. Let me know down below if you want tutorials on this. Then back down here where they've got improvements to the script or render pipeline. So they've added screen space ambient occlusion. As you can see, it's a much faster way to do shadows. They're not like perfect. They're not completely physically accurate, but they look really good for how much it actually, uh, how much performance it costs to do that. You can see the difference between these two views is a, a big difference. This looks so good. Also some more new stuff here. I uh, keep going down, you know, this is mainly for artists. It's not my area. Um, here they've got subsurface scattering, which is really cool, which is where this object, this dragon is green, but it's got subsurface scattering, which means as the light passes through, it actually gives it a yellowy tint because if you mix white and green, you get this kind of yellowy light green. It's like if you get a torch and you hold it up to your skin, your skin kind of goes ready because you can see the light in the skin. It gets absorbed a bit. So it's like that with this dragon. I'm not an artist. I probably explained that wrong, but I roughly know what it means and it, it gives a really cool effect. And then 2D stuff, not really my thing, but if you want to read it, obviously the links down below, you can go have a look better menus, better default assets, and a uh, tile map preview package here for some extra stuff. Sounds interesting for those involved. And platforms, so Unity can now build to Apple Silicon, which I think is just Apple's new processor. So, you know, Unity is known for being able to build to pretty much anything without you as a de developer having to do much. You know, I've built a game before and just, you know, export it to Linux, Mac, and not really had to do anything uh, different to just exporting it to Windows. So, you know, it's always good to be able to build to as many platforms as possible. Improvements to performance on different devices and input system fixes and improvements. And that's pretty much it. So now it's all about getting started. So yeah, if you don't know how to get started, just head over to your Unity Hub and go to your installs and you click add. And then you see here, latest pre-releases is currently this one. I've got it installed, Unity 2020.2. Oh, B2, you know, it's beta because it says here and there's a B in the version. So if you want to jump in and have a go now before I make any tutorials on it, that's how you do it. Get the beta, make a new project and go ahead and give it a go. But yeah, let me know down below what you want to see next out of the features I covered, what's most interesting to you. And I'll take in all the results from people and that'll determine my next few videos for the coming few weeks. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before we go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Luis Ramos, Jake Nixon, Benjamin Hilda, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Malvin, John Selig, David McDermott, Exit, Bidadai, Dustin Miller, Rack, and Yoris Letter. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below, as well as links to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.